From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you in part by SAP, software for great companies, not just great big companies. Learn more at sap.com slash midsize. And by CIT, Capital Redefined. Issue one, farewell, fall well. The Reverend Jerry Falwell was laid to rest this week. Over 10,000 mourners attended the funeral service, many arriving as early as 3.30 a.m. The service returned Falwell to his roots, the Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia, which he founded 51 years ago. Over the years, Reverend Falwell's evangelical convictions and his organizational brilliance impelled his fellow religious conservatives to involve themselves and to influence U.S. politics. In 1979, Falwell founded the Moral Majority, an evangelical organization focused on social and political change. For over 40 years, Falwell was a figure of immense controversy. To him, the three great scourges afflicting his country were, quote, atheism, secularism, and humanism. Reverend Falwell placed the blame for the 9-11 terrorist attacks at the feet of of his domestic opponent. I really believe that the pagans and the abortionists and the feminists and the gays and the lesbians who are actively trying to make that an alternative lifestyle, the ACLU, People for the American Way, all of them who tried to secularize America, I point the finger in their face and say, you helped this happen. Subsequently, Falwell recanted this statement, but the recantation got far less attention than the utterance itself. Reverend Falwell was also an ardent backer of Israel, and he believed that the turmoil in the Middle East was the precursor of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Also, he stipulated that, quote, the Antichrist must be, of necessity, a Jewish male, unquote. Question. Jerry Falwell linked the religious right to the Republican Party. Who got the better of the bargain in that alliance, Falwell or the GOP? Pat Buchanan. Well, uh, unquestionably, John, as you pointed out, Falwell formed the moral majority in 1979, and the Republican Party subsequently run three straight massive landslides with Ronald Reagan leading us to two of them. What Jerry Falwell did, he became the voice and face of a Christian conservative movement which was not aggressive in the culture war. It was not the aggressor, John. It was defending its own values, convictions, and beliefs which it saw under sudden and massive assault. And he organized this movement that already existed and pointed it in a political direction. And he was a striking success, and I knew him. He was a good man. But Farwell did not deliver a victory to Ronald Reagan. It was the blue collars that delivered the victory. He had the support of the moral majority, but they, they were not critical to the Reagan Here's victory. Here's the thing. No, no. Here's the thing. He gave help give many Reagan Democrats. What you've got to realize is President Reagan ran against an evangelical Jimmy Carter and carried 10 out of 11 southern states against Carter, leaving Carter only Georgia. The Christian conservatives did a tremendous job in helping the Republican Party win those states. Hello. The Republican Party would not be a majority party without the social conservatives, and Jerry Falwell did politicize the religious right and brought them into the Republican Party. But Ronald Reagan at least had the formula right. He gave the religious right a seat at the table, but he didn't give them veto power. And he didn't uh, take their ideas and let them sublimate other aspects of the party. And the religious right tried to take over, and I think the overreaching in the Terry Schiavo case was the beginning of the end of the Republican uh, majority. And so now the, uh, the, the, the candidates running for the nomination on the Republican side uh, there's, there's a mixed bag. Some of them are, are 
ba pandering and bowing to the religious right, and others are trying to break free of the stranglehold. And Rudy Giuliani is an experiment in progress to see if they can get away from the stranglehold of the religious right. Martin, did you, do you think that George Bush owes his presidency to the religious fundamentalists by reason of the 2004 election and what they did for him in Ohio? I think it certainly helped, but I think that the, the, uh, both the religious right and the Republican Party are going to pay, are already paying a pretty stiff price for this very bizarre alliance. I think the Republican Party is, uh, has been in a kind of a state of incipient civil war between the traditional country club, re country club Republicans and these new, very different social class, very different cultural origins, Republicans from the religious right. And I think that equally the religious right is paying the price now. We're seeing it, we're seeing the religious conservatives, the evangelicals falling apart. We're seeing new movements of environmentalists uh, environmentalists from the evangelicals we're seeing a lot of evangelicals who are openly criticizing this in this alliance that was formed with the republicans i think it's run its course pat was right i think it helped for a dozen years i think it perhaps helped again in the one state of iowa but i think both both parties republicans and religious right will pay a long stiff price for this going forward and i think falwell is part of the problem let's not forget all the mistakes all the other things that falwell recanted he recanted his support for segregationism in the 1950s. He recanted his support for, he, he was totally against even the mixing of, 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 of blacks and whites, of, of, of married couples. He, he apologized for that. If divine inspiration ever reached anybody on earth, it was not Jerry Falwell. He got it wrong time after a time again. Uh, what do you think, Clarence? Is it, is it a run its course? Uh, well, I think, I love your question there, John, insofar as, you know, who got the better part of the deal mm -hmm. here, the Republicans or Christian mm -hmm. conservatives. I think there's no question the Republican Party got the big benefit out of this as far as the unity, the power that they had all those years. And, and what did they give in return? Well, the Christian conservatives did get some Supreme Court appointments that, well, that, that lead in their direction. the conservatives got the gay, uh, the, the amendment. Remember they voted gay marriage? on that? Gay marriage. Oh, that's a big deal. Then they got feet, they got feet. I mean, I mean, Fetal how many, how many people? Thank you, thank you very much, John. But I will say this: in 2004, 13 states had on the ballot the gay marriage thing that was caused right. by the guy in San Francisco and the lady judge in Massachusetts, and that went down to defeat by 55, 57 percent in Ohio, 85 percent in Mississippi. Those you're votes carried a number of states. It would have passed if the Republican Party. No, no, I'm saying passed. all those votes you know, came I mean, out. Really? What, what and then the they pulled, they pulled the Republican the blank. They pulled the Republican switch yeah. at the same time. Okay, yeah. okay. Religion, beware. There is no position on which people are so immovable as their religious beliefs. There is no more powerful ally one can claim in a debate than Jesus Christ or God or Allah or whatever one calls this supreme being. But like any powerful weapon, the use of God's name on one's behalf should be used sparingly. The religious factions that are growing throughout our land are not using their religious clout with wisdom. They are trying to force government leaders into following their position 100%. If you disagree with these religious groups on a particular moral issue, they complain. They threaten you with a loss of money or votes or both. I'm frankly sick and tired of the political preachers across this country telling me as a citizen that if I want to be a moral person, I must believe in A, B, C, and D. Just who do they think they are? And from where do they presume to claim the right to dictate their moral beliefs to me? And I am even more angry as a legislator who must endure the threats of every religious group who thinks it has some God-granted right to control my vote on every roll call in the Senate. I am warning them today. I will fight them every step of the way if they try to dictate their moral convictions to all Americans in the name of conservatism. Uh, that was Barry Goldwater. I never thought Barry Goldwater would sound so great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, what about, is he still the conscience of conservatives? 
of some conservatives. You know, what, or is the, he a what that quote, no, what that quote tells you is there are different kinds of conservatives. He was a libertarian. Everybody who knows Barry Goldwater knows that. His objection to the to the Civil Rights Act vote was it was an encroachment on states' rights. It was a, a principal view. It was he, he was against the draft. He was in favor of legalizing marijuana. He was a he was a libertarian, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that that did not jibe with the the, the Christian right as we have known it John, post. Right. Well, would you get a real heretic today, Pat? Uh, no. No, no, he's, he's still considered a great hero. Uh, he's is in the he more in line with what you were saying earlier than are the fundamentalists no, today? Got, look, they're both parts of the conservative movement. Barry Goldwater at one point was Mr. Conservative. But, John, Martin Luther King invoked God in the battle for civil rights. The whole battle right. to overthrow slavery came out of a lot of the churches. Right. Religion has always played a role in social reform in this country, and it's got every right to state its case and make its voice heard. Right, but it doesn't have a right to force a particular view of religion down the throats of everybody else. And Barry Goldwater's heir in the current Republican field is Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who is a libertarian and who is really striking a chord. I mean, he's not going to win the nomination or the presidency, but uh, he is speaking to a lot of people who think the Republican Party has gone way too far into the bedrooms of American people and too far and too He's pro-life. And let not, let's not he forget the devil quotes scripture for his own purposes. <laughs> and the devil has the best tunes. Let me Thank tell you, you okay. Falwell was right about the Teletubby. He was subversive. <laughs> okay, religion beware, part two. <laughs> was not, repeat not, founded as a Christian nation. This was stated early and unmistakably in a treaty drafted under George Washington in 1796 and signed by John Adams in 1797. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. The founding fathers were insistent that the state remain neutral towards Mr. organized Gilbert religion. Votes, Christianity Mr. is the most perverted system that ever shone on man. Thomas Jefferson. During almost 15 centuries has the legal establishment of Christianity been on trial. What has been its fruits? More or less, in all places, pride and indolence in the clergy, ignorance and servility in the laity, in both superstition, bigotry, and persecution. Question. James Madison is considered the author of the Constitution. Why was he so skeptical, even cynical, about Christianity? Clarence Page. Well, because he was a man who, who knew from the European experience uh, what uh, religion could do when it had state power behind it. You mean it. the Inquisition? Uh, I mean the Inquisition. I mean uh, uh, the uh, the kind of religious conflicts we've seen in the United Kingdom even what about today between... Which, what uh, about witch the, burning right in uh, our own country? Right, you go on and on. They John, were closer to that in John, time than John, we are. Right? John Jefferson and Adams were anti-Catholic, anti-Papist. One of the causes of the Revolutionary War is the Brits turned the Ohio Valley over to the French Canadians. What's the point? All these What's Catholics. the point? Catholics what I'm Christians. talking about, you're talking 15 centuries, Madison said. He's talking about the Catholic Church. He's not talking about Protestant Christianity. We are a Christian country, or were. We are a, a secular nation under the Constitution. The two are not in you, conflict. You care to comment on this? Well, yes. I mean, I remember, are you a, I, you a citizen, by the way? Uh, no, I'm a, but I'm a legal alien. I think we're going to have a look no, at that. American, <laughs> American, American presidential elections have been fought and won on the slogan of warning against the perils of rum, Romanism <laughs> and rebellion. That was right. a losing election. Well, nonetheless, <laughs> it was the, 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 this is the most religious country outside of the Middle East. Religios. Religios country, outside the most, the most church attending country, outside the Islamic world. It's, it go, in Britain, in Europe, we're almost post-Christian societies. Three, four, five percent go to church. In this country, it's 40 odd percent. Seventy percent of Americans say they believe in angels.
What would, the, what would the framers have thought of the religious right today were the framers alive? They would have thought they were a complete menace and a threat to the good order and dignity of the U.S. Constitution and American well-being. And I think they, were, they would have been right. Do you think They're that more the... more than they are, I mean, militant evangelicals. No was the revolution it. as much about overthrowing an official religion as it was overthrowing the king? No. Well, was, was there any separation between the king, <laughs> between God and country there? Forget, I mean, the, the king was the king was the head of the established church, That's right. as yeah. indeed Prince Charles would yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be told what to believe. Were the founding fathers afraid that an official religion might take root? Were yeah, they worried it, more about yeah. a religion affecting uh, statecraft or statecraft if, of, if, of, if, uh, offending if, religion? If an official religion takes root, what else official can take root? And I, I, I just think there is an independence of spirit and thought that found that that belong to the founders of this country that we want to continue. We don't want religious yeah. dogma right. exercising well, Eleanor, Eleanor, power over had, our you, laws. The purpose of the Constitution was separate the national government from church. However, nine state governments had church religions, John, when the Constitution was established. It was at the federal government they were not to have any established church. But nine states had yeah, established churches. But they wilted on their own. But they were good, they were good so. Bible reading people because what they understood was to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar and render unto God that no, which is God. They didn't, God. They didn't have Amazon.com. They didn't get enough variety <laughs> in their reading. Well, the irony right? of this is when you've right. got a country that's got re religious freedom, then religion is stronger than in those countries where they try to, to dictate well, it through the If you cannot bring himself to say that it's better for the United States to remain secularist, as was intended by the founding fathers and by the documents, since there is nothing in the in the under God phrase that requires a religion, mm -hmm. you understand you can have yeah. God given rights through right. the natural mm -hmm. law. Well, what we want. What, what I'm saying is, can you bring yourself to say that this society should be a secular society? No, I do agree. The government should be neutral as between religions. No doubt about it. Catholic. Is that secularism? Are, no. Here's the thing. Is that secularism? It should be supportive. It, it should be supportive of religion. And if the country is predominantly Christian, it should not be at war with the country. Secularism <laughs> does not mean anti-religious, Patrick. Well, militant secularism that came out of the '60s has de-Christianized the country. Oh, That's what they're calling. No, Warren, no, no, who no, study no, with the, the Oxford militant. English Dictionary defines secular as what? Religion free. The, Absolutely. The Relig religion neutral in the effect. The militancy you're talking about is by opening is about opening up society, having women have more rights, having gay people yeah. have more rights, having minorities take it's their about place throwing in the, the society. Bible and uh, the Ten Commandments uh, out of the schools and good, out of the public you square. You can be a good the Ten person without in order to have a religious reading. A let, religious group. Let the people vote and decide. Don't have the courts decide. That's all concerned. But you don't have. see the danger that the Constitution. I don't see a bit of danger from us having an established religion. Oh, it's way down, down the list, John. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, now we have it. Bring, bring back King George yes, III. You, says you can Patrick. understand how they have the power to insert something into public policy, which may not be good in public policy. It may be good. They've got a right to act on their beliefs, yeah, just as you do. The alliance Bible? between the religious right and the GOP is a holy alliance. Or is the alliance between religion and the GOP an unholy alliance? It's a it's a natural alliance. Conservative Christians and conservative Republicans is a natural alliance. They overdid it, and the country is rebelling. Yeah. And I must say, this show can count as going to church this Sunday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it's become a dance of death between the two of them. It's really damaging both. It's damaging a, both. An damaging unholy both. alliance. It's not a holy alliance, it's a political alliance, just as all the other fax factions of the Republican Party or any other party, uh, you know, for, for mutual benefit, they come together, and that's why we're seeing such a, a withdrawal now of so many Christian conservatives, because they're seeing so little payoff, and they see how much decadence there was in other sec sectors of the party, and now I think they're regrouping. I think what you're saying is that it's a dying, unholy alliance. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> that. When we come back, when we come back, the tussle over Tehran. <laughs> I've been hearing that SAP has business software for mid-sized companies. So naturally, I did what you'd expect. Had my hearing tested. Turns out I'm fine.
lost my job and my health insurance. The first thought was, how am I going to get my medication I need? I was in a lot of trouble. If you're uninsured and struggling, America's pharmaceutical companies want to help. Call 1-888-4PPA now to see if you may qualify. PPA saves me $1,300 a month. We've been to nearly 1,000 cities in all 50 states, helping more than 3 million people in need. Without my wife and PPA, I don't know if I could have been here today. The Partnership for Prescription Assistance, on the road to helping you. It fuels our lives and creates the products we depend on. It powers our workforce. It brings us home and gives us warmth. It lets us travel the earth and reach for the sky. Vital for life. Too precious to waste. Oil and natural gas. Together, let's use it wisely. Learn more at energytomorrow.org. Issue 2, Tehran Tussle. On Monday, the U.S. will meet bilaterally with Iran to officially discuss the Iraq war, but the Iran nuclear issue could easily be broached. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran this week, appeared to have gone out of his way to stress that Iran was living by the terms of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, namely civil use of nuclear power. Quote, the enemies aim to prevent us from using peaceful nuclear technology, unquote. That's peaceful technology, he said. Also on Thursday, probably referring to our two aircraft carriers maneuvering on the Persian Gulf, Amani Najad gave the United States a piece of advice, quote, our recommendation, recommendation to you is this. Stop your mischievous deeds. The Iranian nation has nuclear technology for industrial purposes, unquote. Another piece of arguably encouraging news on the threshold of Monday's meeting, our new U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Zalmay Khalilzad, said this about Iran and nuclear energies. Quote, in their interest, if their interest, rather, is in civilian nuclear power only and their right to have access to and make use of civilian nuclear electricity with due regard to the security of fuel supplies, there is a possibility of reaching an agreement." Unquote. Multiple uh, choice question. In comparison to one year ago, are the odds of a U.S. preemptive strike on Iran's nuclear facilities a lower now, be the same, or see a greater than a year ago? John, I'm afraid I think they're greater because I think a lot of things are happening now with the Iranians taking some Americans de facto hostage almost, with the fleet going in there, with the generals saying the Iranians are helping, helping the terrorists in Iraq, and with us apparently supporting some of these anti-Iranian terrorists, if you will, in Baluchistan, I think there's an awful lot of ways we could really have a collision with these folks. And so I'd say it's slightly higher, and I regret it because what you said, that what you laid out there, frankly, I think are the elements of a real deal that could be made. Hello? Yeah, I think the chances are about the same for some sort of military engagement. A rational mind would tell you this administration is in no position to launch any kind of military uh, effort against Iran being timed out in Iraq, but they've got that ar armada off the coast of, of, uh, of Iran, and I think they're looking at uh, possible bombing before this president leaves office. I, I don't feel at all comfortable that this is off the table. What about you, Martin? I'm afraid that uh, logically it ought to be uh, less of a chance of military action, but I think given this particular administration it's probably higher. We know that there's a huge argument between the Cheney faction and the Condoleezza Rice faction inside the, inside the administration over this. We know that there's, there's various forces trying to persuade the Israelis, if nobody else, to give the provocation to move it ahead. We know that parts of the Iranian government are clearly out of control. The intelligence ministry, who's arrested Hale Esfandiari and other, uh, other Iranian-American scholars. Uh, the prospect of a, of a provocation is huge. The one thing that could stop it is that I was talking to Air Force people who said that um, 
it would take at least three days of preliminary bombardment to take out the anti-aircraft uh, protections before you could start hitting the tanks. Let's if that's true, at, then it's three days for Congress to act. Let's look at who's around. Mm -hmm. Wolfowitz is gone. Right. Big neocon. Yes, he is. The principal theoretician of our involvement in Iraq. That's right. Cheney's been besmirched by uh, Libby. Uh, Scooter Libby. Libby. Right. Uh, then you have Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld is right. gone. Yes. And you have Rice, who is on the side, I think, of an accommodation. Mm -hmm. She's a so you can't. You, don't you think that the, the, the contrary to what we've heard so far, this pessimism on this group, yes, John, that, I, that it is lower now than it was then, the, John, the probability as, of a strike? As won't as I am to go up against the view of both <laughs> Pat and Martin when they're in agreement with this doomsday scenario, I, 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 I mean? hate to sound a note of hope, but yes, I see, I see the groundwork being laid for some serious talks. There's a lot of saber rattling and certainly it's, it's all, all true that, 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 that Cheney and a number of others are ready to bomb bomb Iran. But uh, I, 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 it's hard to believe in this current political atmosphere that this administration is about ready to make an, another extension of our, of our military might in that direction. No, but uh, the what? president has 600 days left in office yeah, and I think, I think yeah. he <laughs> feels that uh, whoever succeeds him won't have the nerve to do this. And, and this is a cowboy are, president. Uh, no, working. Pat, the odds no. are much lower and your acumen has once again shone through. Okay. Thank you, John. We'll be right back with predictions. <laughs> the McLaughlin Group is brought to you by Pharma. New medicines, new hope. And by the people of America's oil and natural gas industry. Learn more at energytomorrow.org. Today, for the first time ever, 90% of seniors have comprehensive prescription drug coverage. Millions of older and disabled Americans with peace of mind, thanks to Medicare's new prescription benefit. That's why leading newspapers say rushing to change Medicare would be a mistake. USA Today tells Congress, put on the brakes. The journal warns it's the last thing patients need. The Post says change is the wrong prescription. Medicare's prescription drug benefit, it's working for seniors. SAP is affordable solutions for companies like ours. I have a sneaky feeling the world of high precision electronic gas pressure gauges is about to change. Blue sky smiling at me. Nothing but blue sky. Today, there's a fuel that, when paired with advanced diesel engines, will help reduce truck emissions by 90%. And that means bluer skies and cleaner air for all of us. Introducing new ultra-low sulfur diesel from the people who bring you oil and natural gas. Learn more at energytomorrow.org. Blessed Memorial Day. Bye-bye. <laughs>